So apparently IGN is once again under the microscope and apparently there are people who believe that IGN has a bias towards uh, PlayStation games over Xbox's games. There are things that may suggest that within IGN, some of the reviewers actually do care about this. And in my opinion, I think probably other reviewers don't care. They just want to review their games. And that's the thing about the dichotomy there. They have many different reviewers that actually do review games. However, this one clip was taken from one of their podcasts or one of their shows. And I understand there's probably not a lot of context behind a 45 second clip. But when you watch this clip, you'll be able to put two and five together and possibly see if you think they're saying something or not. So I'll play the clip, I'll shut up, and then let you guys kind of make up your own mind from here. I'm in love with this, and I predict, I'm gonna predict it right now. We here at IGN, I say we, but it's gonna be one person that's reviewing this game. <laughs> mm -hmm. I say we here, we're gonna give this an IGN nine, and if we don't, if we don't give it a nine or higher, then I invite, I have an open invitation for <laughs> the, the person that is reviewing this game to come uh -huh. on beyond and let us share words with one another okay. and talk about whatever you're I mean, going to get. They're, Akeem, hold on, they're going to do hold that hold no matter what, Akeem. That's you're, like that's regardless of the yeah. score they give it. They're going to come on the show and talk about this. It's the biggest PlayStation yeah, they, game. Now, in all fairness, this gentleman that's actually saying this, you know, regardless of the score of the game, he's trying to say, uh, you know, that's not a standard that, you know, we should apply here. But I understand that there's also fandom going on. The gentleman that's talking about this, he's a fan. And so he's like, man, this game has got to score, you know, this amount, having seen or maybe having played, uh, you know, a bit of the game early or whatnot. I think this is probably his position in a sense. But then another person in this podcast says something that just kind of inflamed it, in my opinion. So listen. To come talk about that, but also it's, it's a I'm, weird. Bet. I'm giving it's, them an open invitation. I can't. I, I, can I just? Can I give them that? I'm just. No, but you're, it's them. like you're you're betting that it, the sun's gonna come out tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> so that statement, you're betting that the sun's gonna come out tomorrow. I think that just has a lot of interesting implications for an outlet that is wanting to at least provide uh, what I think is uh, as neutral a position as they possibly can on a product. However, it seems like there is some laughing and playing going on there, so I wouldn't necessarily take much of it into account, in my opinion. Now, you have to also look at a broader context of what's been going on. A lot of people on the Xbox side, and by the way, I, I couldn't care less. I, I game on PC. I do have the consoles, though, because, you know, it's nice for you to be able to kind of see from those perspectives some games and... A lot of people on the Xbox side have said, you know, it seems like PlayStation has been purposefully, you know, in a sense, making moves to make Xbox look really weird, especially since the Activision, uh, you know, acquisition was announced. I think the Bethesda one was kind of a shock for a lot of people, but they didn't really know what to do with it. But then once the Activision, you know, deal got announced, it just seems like a lot of people really did come out of the woodwork. You know, you saw the person who got really, really lambasted when they gave Starfield a 7 out of 10. A lot of folk were like, yo... Uh, I says they, you know, they gave Starfield seven and, you know, people were like, you know, talking about it and all of that stuff to me, review scores on Metacritic don't even really matter. I just play a game for myself. That's the way I do it. And then at the end of the day, it really does bring into question, nonetheless, the credibility of reviews. Many of you know that on this channel, I played Gotham Knights extensively. This was a game that, you know, received a lot of, uh, in my opinion, it was what I thought was really strange feedback. A lot of people were out there saying things about the game that just weren't true. And most of them were so-called big reviewers. So one of the biggest problems many of them had to actually face was, uh, you know, in a sense, trying to compare a game that the developer said was not an Arkham game with the Batman Arkham games. That was already the very first hurdle that they had to overcome because the developers went ahead and said, you know, this is not an Arkham game. This is not an Arkham game. They said it multiple times, but it seemed like that fell on deaf ears. Everybody kept saying, you know, they just had the Arkham formula. They just did this and did that. But in reality, I feel like they didn't give the game a fair shot. Now, in the one side, you know, they could have said maybe the overall general aspect of the game probably wasn't appealing. We get it, reviews or opinions and so on and so forth. But one thing that a lot of reviewers did was they went ahead and they actually did lie about the combat of Gotham Knights. And this is when I started to look and say, it seems to me like reviews are based on the, you know, preferences for the most part in terms of how people rate them of the gamer themselves, who is also the reviewer, because sometimes these reviewers will say some really weird stuff. Like, for example, 
uh, skill up and white light. These are big YouTubers. Uh, and another one, I can't remember their name said that. Oh, and Luke Stevens. Yes. They, they, they mentioned some things about Gotham Knights combat. And in the case of white light and skill up, they said that you can only defeat one enemy class. This was the court of owls using a specific move. There was no other way to, def to, you know, defeat them or break their guard. Now, the truth of the matter is whenever you actually encounter that enemy class, the developers actually give you a notification and tell you that, hey, man, this enemy class can be defeated by doing one of two things. You can use that particular ability that they all cited and you can use specific abilities that you have access to. But it seems like they missed out the description. They didn't necessarily pay attention to it. And they went ahead and said this. So. I thought it was a matter of omission in a sense, but it was still a lie because that's exactly what it is. So seeing the way, you know, reviewers can be subjective in their opinions, I can see how gamers from all sides could say, you know, even though that might be a joke, it still kind of is weird that they would go ahead and say something like that. So I'm hoping that, you know, Spider-Man is going to get its fair shake. But at the same time, you know, we don't want to be blind to the fact that Probably the outlet that a lot of people are going to be looking at for, you know, their opinions on Spider-Man 2 is actually saying something like this in a podcast. Already, IGN had, you know, made a video, a, a short. This was a, just a, just more recently. Anyways, they made this one short where they made fun of Gotham Knights in their video. They took the short down because a lot of people were like, yo. Is this what a news organization should be doing? I understand there's also mixed with fandom. So sometimes the lines are blurred. But, you know, we're not, um, in my opinion anyways, we're not, un um, I would say, ignorant of the fact that even within the fandom that goes on an IGN, sometimes they'll throw shade at games that they probably don't like. And sometimes they'll probably favor games because they seem to like those games. So this is something that we've seen overall. We also saw Hogwarts Legacy where a lot of these news outlets did not get review codes because they had already maintained a previous position before the game even showed up at their doorstep. So I'm not saying that, you know, this is exactly the case, but I'm not saying it's far fetched for people to see any issue with this because we've seen behaviors across the so-called gaming media forums that have shown that objectivity is something that is far from, you know, what it is that they actually value in those studios. But anyways, I thought I'd pull this out here and show you guys. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching the video. I appreciate you guys' time and audience, and hopefully we'll talk pretty soon in another one. Peace out.